So I've seen a lot of videos online talking about setting up a Behringer BCF2000 with firmware 3. As far as I know, this is the only video that talks about setting up a BCF2000 with X32 Edit on firmware version 4. As far as I'm aware, there probably is. I haven't seen one yet. You first have to set up your BCF2000 to connect to your computer. It's a USB 1.1 spec output on the back of the BCF2000. So it uses a USB type B connector and then that goes to type A. Well, I've got a USB hub because my MacBook only has USB C outputs or inputs and outputs. And so I've had to get a USB hub which converts USB 1.1 to USB-C. That's what I've had to do. Anyway, you connect your BCF2000 to your computer, however you're going to do it, and then you put the BCF2000 into Mackie control mode. That is done by holding the first, first row of encoders, so the first row of switches that are there, there's two rows of switches. So you'll choose the first row of switches, the second one from the left. You hold that switch down and then you turn it on. And that puts it into Mackie control mode. You'll see in the display, it'll, it'll try to display MC, Mackie control mode. If you find that you're in edit global mode, then pressing the exit key will get you out of that. Um, if you're not in edit global mode, then pressing the exit key won't do anything, but it's, it's there just in case, because it won't do anything. Launch the X32 edit on the computer now, and that X32 edit is what's going to control the X32 rack. The BCF2000 is going to control X32 edit, but X32 edit is going to control the X32 rack. So there's still a couple of setups that you need to do. If you choose Setup at the top right of X32 Edit, then you choose the MIDI Control tab in, in Setup. Then you would have to choose the BCR. For some reason, it's always sees my computer always sees my BCF2000 as a BCR2000. I don't know if that's the case for everyone, but. Um, Choosing BCR2000 port 1 is the USB port. Uh, port 2 is the MIDI ports on the back of the BCF2000. So port 1 is important to choose. So choose that for the input and the MIDI output. And then you'll need to enable Mackie control mode, which is enabled when it's light blue. You should see the faders all snap up to position to emulate everything that's uh, in X32 edit and the BCF2000 should now control X32 edit and which in turn controls the X32 rack or X32 mix or the MXQ app. It's absolutely it's as simple as that. That's all you have to do. And when you're using the X32 edit, well the BCF2000 the top controls, the top rotary controls are the pan controls. So if you don't press anything, they're always the pan controls on channels 1 to 8. If you press preset right, it takes you to channels 9 to 16. Preset right again, takes you to 17 to 24. Preset right again, takes you to 25 to 32. Preset left goes back in 8s as well. So you just jump in 8s as you want to move across the uh, mixing desk. The top switches, they're all the mutes, so you'll see mutes in the X32 edit application on the computer. So if you press them, you'll see something, a channel gets muted, and if you press it again, it's unmuted. Uh, the second row of encoders are the channel select buttons, so it's just like selecting a channel in X32 edit, except they're, they're on the BCF2000 now. Uh, you can still select a channel in the X32 edit though as well. And then the faders, well they're going to be the faders. So they just control the faders. They're all motorized faders. 
So when you move something, it's snap. They snap into position. They're great as faders. So this is the BCF two thousand. It's controlling the X thirty two Edit app on the MacBook Pro, which is in turn controlling an X thirty two rack wirelessly, and which is in turn controlling the X Mix thirty two app on an iPad wirelessly. And you can see the X32 edit application on the PowerBook, the X32 Mix app on the iPad, and you can see the BCF 2000. So I'll just quickly run through some things for the BCF 2000, and then uh, I'll demonstrate them with audio. So first of all, the BCF 2000 works in groups of eight. So if we go to the first uh, group of eight, that's channels one to eight, and channels nine to 16, then channels 17 to 24, and channels 25 to 32. So if we go back to 17 to 24, the faders control the individual faders. So you can see them controlling there. Uh, I'll do some other faders just so you can see them. And then the, f the second row of, in of switches, the second row of switches controls the select button for which channel you want to select to control if you want to zoom into it through the channel uh, functions on uh, X32 edit. The first row of encoders, this first row here, controls the mutes. So you can mute things, or you can unmute them. Uh, there we go. And the row of rotary encoders at the top control the pans. So if I choose to pan something to the left or to the right, I'm using Ben's vocal at the moment, and then I can just use that there. So you can see everything's working. I'm going to demonstrate this with audio. I'm going to touch my Okay, so that's everything being demonstrated for using the BCF2000. So if you hold down the top left encoder groups button, then the top switches become solos. If you continue to hold down the top left button, encoder groups button, then the bottom switches become the stereo bus on off. And I'm just going to demonstrate that to you. What's in your mind? I never ever ask if you be mine. Come and smile, don't be shy. Touch my phone, this is. So that was the holding down the top left encoder group switch. But if you hold down the bottom left encoder group switch, then the top switches become something else. So they become the eight effect units focus. If you let go of that encoder group switch, the knobs at the top allow you to edit the effects. If you hold down that switch, they also allow you, but you can let go of that switch if you want to. 
because as long as the focus is on the effect unit, then the rotary encoder groups at the top allow you to edit the effects. So I'm going to show you that happening as well. So there you can see all the effects, the eight effects have come up and then they've eventually they've gone away using them to uh, focus on them but if we, well we'll just use a solo <laughs> quickly but if we use the second buttons then we can see the pre-delay is now being affected by the first encoder, rotary encoder, the decay, then the size and the dampening, the diffusion, the level the low cut and the high cut by the eighth. Okay, so those are really useful functions. You'll see behind that this has jumped to FX one to four. If you if you press the button twice, then it will always jump to FX one to four. While holding the bottom left encoder groups button, the second row of switches control the menu tabs at the top right of the X32 edit. So the top row of switches control the eight focus buttons for the effects and the bottom row of switches control the menu tabs. They mainly control that because the fifth one controls FX1 to 4 which is almost at the top right of X32 edit but it's in the top row of X32 edit. So mainly the top, the top row of buttons, if you hold the bottom left encoder groups button, then the top row will control the effects 1 to 8 focus and the rotary encoders control their their parameters, so allow you to edit their parameters. The bottom row of switches control the menus at the top of the, the top right of X32 edit. So one controls the meter tab, two controls the uh, routing, three controls the setup, four controls the library, five controls effects one to four, six controls the monitor, seven controls the recorder, and eight is the show control tab. That's how they work. Next thing is if you press the store button then the rotary encoders become the EQ controls for the selected channel. So with the selection button you can select a channel and then if you hold down the store button you can then change the EQ for that selected channel. I'm just going to show you that happening just now. So there are lots of functions that can be achieved with key combinations on the BCF2000 in Mackie control mode. I'm not going to cover all of them, but can, if you're interested then I can go further into what can be achieved in another presentation. If you want to see more of these presentations then please subscribe. Thanks for watching.